told us that we are going to have a very outstanding experience today with Dr. Amrit Krishna Mitra. So first of all, I welcome you, Dr. Amrit Krishna Mitra. Thank and you. Uh, then uh, I, I, I also welcome principal of the college, Dr. Bajesh Pare, who is with us uh, for this session. I will wait for a minute. Okay, there are some disturbances. Okay, there was a disturbance. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I also welcome a principal of the college, uh, Dr. Bharadwaj, who is also with us and uh, who also happens to be uh, organic chemist. I welcome Dr. Brajesh Pare, head of the department, chemistry, all the participants uh, and all the faculty which are being presented. First of all, uh, ye jo, uh, the program which we are organizing today. Uh, okay, let me before starting the program, let me uh, say three things to our participants. Please keep your audio on mute mode, and please your keep uh, please keep your video off because if you will go on uh, this uh, switch on off your video and audio, then uh, you will have a bitter learning experience as compared to better learning experience. So to have this better learning experience, we, we please uh, keep you on mute mode and do not leave meeting in between. Please be with us for the complete session. Only then you will understand something. So the today's program, which is uh, and lectured by Dr. Amrit, uh, Amrit Krishna Mitra, this program is being organized under two flagship programs and two very ambitious programs of college. One of them is Pure Pursuit for Research Excellence, which the program was launched in 2017. And since then, we are organizing lectures, workshop, training programs under this uh, flagship program of Pure to felicitate a uh, young faculty and the students so that they can pursue research uh, further in their career and they can move ahead with their academic uh, credentials. The second uh, banner which we uh, which we have today is Professor Srinivasulu Chair. We are organizing uh, Professor Srinivasulu Chair is also supporting this program. This uh, chair was established recently in the college by one uh, by one of our alumni, Dr. Sri Lakshmi Desi Raju, in the name of her uh, father, uh, Professor K. Srinivasulu, who happens to be a distinguished professor of chemistry at Vikram University Ujjain. So we are, these are the two flag bearers for today's program. The program is being supported by, uh, organized by the chemistry, PG Department of Chemistry and Pharmaceutical of Chemistry of Mumbai Mother Science PG College of Gen, supported by Internal Quality Assurance Cell and Mother Desh State uh, Project Directorate for World Bank and PHEQIP projects. So these are the credentials of the program. Now I would request Dr. Rajesh Pare, head of the Department of Chemistry, to please come forward and welcome the guest of this gathering and the guest which is being present today. Thank you, sir. Please welcome. Sir. Uh, please unmute, sir. Uh, Mayank and Mukesh, please take care of that. Yeah, it is unmuted. Now it's un unmuted. Yes, sir. So, once again, very uh, good afternoon to one and all. And uh, uh, Dr. Arpan Bharadwaj, Principal of Madhav Science College of Jain, uh, IQSC coordinator, Dr. Kalpana Singh, all the all the faculty members of the Department of Chemistry, and uh, our guest of today, Dr. Amrit Krishna Mitra. I, I welcome you all uh, on behalf of the Department of Chemistry on this occasion uh, of a series of lectures, and it is the second of the uh, of second lecture of that series. That is under what uh, Dr. Kalpana Singh has said. Uh, that is. Uh, under the pure and that is the, the, the pursuit of excellence for research. And uh, that is under the uh, Professor Lu chair uh, that has recently been established in the college. Uh, once again, uh, Dr. Amrit uh, Krishna uh, uh, Mitra, it's a, it's a great uh, privilege and uh, pleasure and honor to, to, to welcome you. And uh, really I'm going, I'm very much sure that uh, you are so much meticulous in your presentation that all the, the attendees are going to be really benefited and they will have a very nice time. Uh, as far as uh, our college is concerned, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a very old college and uh, it is uh, very humbly, I would say, it is, uh, it is, it is one of the best colleges uh, in the Madhya Pradesh and we are leading in the science education. And 
So it's it's a great pleasure once again without uh, taking much of the time, and uh, I just uh, welcome you all and uh, thank you very much. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Principal sir, would you like to say one word or one line or something, or you would like you would like to conclude in the end? No. Yes, yeah, sir. No, no. I will come in the last. Okay. Thank you, sir. You would like to conclude in the last. Okay. Thank yeah. you. uh then the floor is your uh, yours amit uh, dr amrit mitra but before i just uh, invite you for your lecture let me read a, a, a very uh, a brief profile which you have provided us with uh, dr amrit krishna mitra is assistant professor and head department of chemistry government general degree college singur hubli uh, which comes under which is affiliated to university of bardwan india west bengal dr amrit krishna mitra is uh, presently an assistant professor He acquired his honors degree in chemistry from Saint Xavier's College, Kolkata, under University of Calcutta, and his master's degree from Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. Dr. Mitra did his research work in Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics, Kolkata, under the supervision of uh, Professor Smita Basu. He was awarded PhD in organic chemistry by the University of Calcutta, Calcutta. His area of research is based on synthesis and photophysical studies of heterocyclic compounds with more than a 15 publication in numerous reputed international scientific journals to his credit dr amrit krishna mitra has also penned a book and several book chapters he is the editorial board member of several research journals of international repute he has received several recognitions and awards from numerous reputed organizations of india Dr Mitra is involved in various activities related to chemistry olympiad organized by Homi Bhabha Center for Science Education CIFR Mumbai at present he is also a member of executive council east zone association of chemistry teachers act Homi Bhabha care of Homi Bhabha Center for Science Education CIFR Mumbai with that i invite you dr mitra for your talk uh, the floor is all yours i would uh, request students Uh, to please raise your hands uh, if you want to ask any questions but please be patient raise your hands at the end of the session uh, whosoever uh, the best three uh, interactors will be certified to separate dr mitra welcome floor is yours thank you ma'am ma'am am i audible yeah yeah you are audible yeah thank you ma'am for your kind words it is indeed a great honor for me to be present amongst all of you in this prestigious college government madhup science ujjain uh, madhup science pg college ujjain i would like to thank professor bijesh pari sir professor kalpana madam professor bharadaj for inviting me today i would also like to thank professor lakshmi ravi shankar madam for the wonderful presentation on nmr spectroscopy on the other day thank you madam for enriching us so today let us explore the wonderland of organic chemistry to various named reactions excuse me dr mitra may i in interrupt you yes yes ma'am uh, uh, dr mitra uh, your video is not visible to us if you okay, like, you okay, can okay. switch on your screen is visible but now your screen is screen is not visible yes you are visible you are visible now but but screen is not visible but sir screen is please share again please share again share again ha huh. is it coming ma'am uh i cannot see the screen no it, it came once again gone i hope you, yeah now yeah, it has yeah, come yeah, it, now it has come yeah okay it's there so please be start here yeah, sir take it on the slide huh? on the on the slide show 
Yeah. Yeah. Now both are visible. You are visible and the uh, screen is visible. Thank you. Uh, today, let us explore the wonderland of organic chemistry through various named reactions. Right at the onset of my presentation, I would like to pay my tribute to the very charismatic and glamorous scientist, Professor Robert Barnes Udoer, whom I always consider my inspiration. Dear students, please follow the famous line once made by scientist Udoer. I fell in love with the field of organic synthesis when I was a small boy and the affair is still going on. Try to feel the philosophy behind this line. What a unique scientist he was. He was a great artist of synthetic organic chemistry. The subject organic chemistry will never forget the contribution of scientist Robert Barnes Woodward. Thank you, sir, for inspiring all of us. Today, I'm going to discuss a few CC bond forming reactions of synthetic organic chemistry. As we all know that carbon-carbon bond formation and the functional group transformations are the most fundamental reactions for the construction of a molecular framework and hence represent a forefront of research in organic chemistry. The development of efficient and selective methods for the construction of carbon-carbon bonds has been and continues to be a challenging and exciting endeavor in organic synthesis. Over the years, several carbon-carbon bond forming reactions and their applications in organic chemistry have also been well documented in the literature. The most important ones include claisen ester condensation, aldol condensation, Wittig reaction, Diels-Alder reaction, Michael reaction, Reformatsky reaction, Claisen rearrangements, Fiddlecraft reaction, Grignard reaction, Hecht reaction, Suzuki coupling, Graf's ring closing metathesis, and so forth. Cross coupling reactions are also an important methodology for the formation of various types of CC bonds. <clears throat> the first reaction that we'll discuss today is Claisen ester condensation reaction. <clears throat> this particular reaction is named after the famous scientist Brainer Ludwig Claisen, who first published his work on this reaction in the year 1887. Reynald Ludwig Lezen was a German chemist best known for his following works. He described the condensation of aromatic aldehydes with aliphatic aldehydes or ketones in the year 1881. This variation of now well-known aldol condensation reaction is called the claisen smith condensation. In the year 1887, he discovered the condensation reaction of an ester with an activated methylene group, now known as Claisen ester condensation reaction. Synthesis of cinnamides by reacting aromatic aldehydes with esters. This particular reaction is known as Claisen reaction and was described by Claisen for the first time in the year 1890. He discovered the thermally induced rearrangement of allyl phenyl ether in the year 1912. He detailed its reaction mechanism in his last scientific publication in the year 1925. In his honor, this particular reaction has been named the Claisen rearrangement. He synthesized isartin via a famous process known as Claisen isartin synthesis, described for the first time in the year 1879. He designed a special distillation flask that we use in our everyday chemistry laboratory. This is known as the Claisen flask. Now the big question is that what is Claisen ester condensation? In a simplistic manner, Claisen ester condensation reaction can be described as follows. When ethyl acid is treated with sodium ethoxide in ethanol, we get the sodium salt of ethyl acetoacetate, which on acidification yields ethyl acetoacetate, a particular beta keto ester. Now, let us, let us throw some light on the mechanistic course of Claisen ester condensation reaction. When ethoxide is added to an ester molecule like RCH2CAAT, these two will follow some sort of acid-base reaction. We will obtain the conjugate acid of ethoxide, that is ethanol, and we will also obtain 
the conjugate base of RCH to CWET, that is RCH minus CWET. Now, if we compare the pKa values, then we will observe that the pKa of the alpha hydrogen of ester molecule is around 24, whereas the pKa of ethanol is around 17.5. That means that ethanol is the stronger acid and the ester molecule is the weaker acid. As we all know, that an acid base equilibrium goes from strong acid plus strong base towards weak acid and weak base. But here, we are getting strong acid and strong base from weak acid and weak base. So, it is obvious that the direction of equilibrium in this particular step will be in the left hand side. So, what actually happens? Since the equilibrium is mainly directed in the left hand side, obviously, the proportion of the unreacted ester is much, much higher than the proportion of the conjugate base thus formed. That is the reason why this particular conjugate base RCH minus CWT will be able to follow some nucleophilic substitution reaction on the carbonyl carbon of unreacted ester molecule via AN plus DN mechanism. Here in this step one, what actually happens? Addition of the nucleophile and then departure of the nucleophage. That is why this type of mechanism is known as AN plus DN according to IUPAC nomenclature. <coughs> this is basically a nucleophilic acyl substitution, obviously a normal equilibrium stage. Now, in combination with step one, the equilibrium up to step two will try to remain towards left. That means that in step one, the equilibrium was lying in the left hand side. But in step two, we observe an almost one is to one equilibrium. So, so up to step two, the overall equilibrium will be in the left hand side. That is, although the products of the second stage are a beta keto ester and ethoxide ion, all of the equilibrium up to this particular point have been unfavorable. Very little product would be formed if this was the last step of the reaction. My dear students, here comes the most important step, that is the step three. What happens in step three? In step three, ethoxide follows an acid-base reaction with the beta keto ester just formed after step two. This is another acid-base reaction. But the point to be noted that here, the pKa of this particular hydrogen is around 11, and the pKa of ethanol <coughs> is around 17.5. <coughs> that means that now this is the stronger acid, this is the weaker acid. Obviously, its conjugate base is now becoming the stronger one, and this particular conjugate base is now becoming the weaker one. So now we are getting weak acid and weak base from some strong acid and strong base. So there is no problem. Now obviously the equilibrium is mainly directed in the right hand direction. <clears throat> the step three will drive the overall equilibrium towards right. Again, the separation of sodium salt of beta keto ester from the reaction mechanism drives the equilibrium towards right. Often, a technique is employed to remove ethanol, a product of pleasant ester condensation from the reaction mixture. <clears throat> Thus, we can understand that step three plays the most important role. Step three plays the pivotal role for the success of pleasant ester condensation. Because it is quite clear to all of us that in step one, the equilibrium is lying mainly in the left hand side. In step two, we are getting an almost one is to one equilibrium. That means that up to step two, the net equilibrium is in the left hand side. But it is only due to the step three, which drives the overall equilibrium in our desired direction. So we can claim it in this type of way that if there is no step three, means no Claisenester condensation. We are, we are very much owed to the step three of place an ester condensation reaction. <clears throat> Obviously, from the above study, it is <clears throat> clear to us 
that state 3 is essential to the success of Claisen-Ester condensation. And here, one equivalent term, sodium methoxide is consumed. That's building Claisen-Ester condensation. The ester molecule must have to contain at least two inolizable alpha hydrogen atoms. One for the formation of carbon ion that is required in step one, and the other for the successful completion of step three. Now, the big question arises regarding this particular ester molecule. The question is whether this particular molecule will follow Claisen ester condensation reaction or not. Why? Why such a question arises? Because if you follow this molecule minutely, then it will be clear to you that this particular ester is having only one alpha hydrogen. Since only one alpha hydrogen atom is present, there is no problem regarding the step one. Even there is no problem regarding the step two. But step three is not possible for an ester molecule like this. And all of us know that no step three means no Claisen ester condensation. Thus, we can claim since this particular ester is having only one alpha hydrogen, this molecule is not expected to undergo Claisen ester condensation to yield following beta keto ester. But, but we do want to carry out such a reaction. Then what is the way out? So today, we have to devise a method by means of which we can carry out place an ester condensation reaction on an ester molecule like this. How can we do it? Dear students, you please, you please tell me what is the problem? Why do we need step three? What is the importance of step three? Why do we need step three? We need step three because step one betrays with us. As in step one, the equilibrium is lying in the backward way. Step two plays a neutral role, so we need step three to drive the overall equilibrium in our desired direction. But for an ester like this, step three is not possible. Then what is the way out? The only option is that we have to modify the step one in such a way so that the equilibrium direction of step one should be in the right-hand side. How can we do it? Yes, we can do it by using a strong base. <coughs> If we add a strong base like PH3C minus, then it can be done. Why and how? As we all know, the pK value of alpha hydrogen atoms of the ester system is around 24. And the conjugate acid of PH3C minus is PH3CH. And the pK value of PH3CH is around 33. So if we compare the pK values of this ester molecule and the pK value of PH3CH, then it is obvious that the acidity of ester molecule is comparatively higher. This is now the stronger acid. This is now the weaker acid. So if we add a strong base like PH3C minus, the pK of its conjugate acid is greater than 24. The pKa of PH3CH, the conjugate acid of this molecule, is around 33. So now it is becoming the stronger acid, and this is becoming the weaker acid. So we are getting weaker acid and weaker bases from strong acid and strong bases. So obviously, now using a base like this, the equilibrium direction will be in the right hand side try to follow the write-up, we have to use the base B such that the pK of the conjugate acid BH plus is higher than 24. Why higher than 24? Because usually the pKa of alpha hydrogen of an ester molecule is around 24. So we have to use such a base molecule so that the pKa of the conjugate acid BH plus should be greater than 24. Then only the equilibrium of step one will try to remain towards right, and step three no longer matters. Thus, using a strong base like PHPC minus, we can achieve Claisen ester condensation reaction on a molecule like this. And the product will be 
unusual beta keto ester after step 2 in an considerably good yield thus we can modify the previous step by saying that step 3 is only essential to the success of clazen ester condensation provided of course the condensing base is sodium methoxide or something like that now by using an ester of a dicarboxylic acid 16 or 17 or higher we do expect the intramolecular clazen ester condensation reaction intramolecular clazen ester condensation is known as dickman condensation dickman condensation works well for five six and seven member drinks <clears throat> try to follow this particular example this molecule is having two ester functionalities right and moreover this particular molecule is a symmetrical one since this molecule is a symmetrical one so it doesn't matter whether carbon ion will be generated from here and it will attack over there or the carbon ion is going to be generated from here and it will attack over there so whatever may be the situation we will we will always obtain a neutral beta keto ester just like this so this particular example is known as dickman condensation this is nothing but an intramolecular clazen ester condensation reaction dear students you can understand that this particular molecule is a beta keto ester if we perform hydrolysis then this molecule will be converted to some sort of beta keto acid and all of us know it that beta keto acids on mild heating will be easily decarboxylated out beta keto acids on mild heating follow an easy decarboxylation via a six member cyclic test so after hydrolysis followed by mild heating this particular molecule will be converted to a cyclopentanone molecule like this now let us follow another example of dickman condensation if we are having a molecule like this this is also another symmetrical molecule when this particular compound is treated with sodium methoxide then we can expect intramolecular clazen ester condensation it doesn't matter whether the carbon ion will be generated from here and it will attack over there or the carbon ion is generated from here and it will attack over here since this molecule is also another example of a symmetrical molecule it doesn't matter so whatever may be the situation we will always obtain a neutral beta keto ester just like this <clears throat> this particular concept is is extremely important this concept is known as cross clazen ester condensation reaction if we consider two different esters each containing two alpha hydrogens there is a possibility of the formation of four different products why because if we are having a mixture of ch3cwt and ch3ch2cwt and if sodium methoxide is added in this particular mixture we will obtain definitely the self condensation product of this molecule we will obtain definitely the self condensation product of this molecule these two are the self clazen ester condensation products apart from these two products we will also be getting products like this this particular product will be formed when the carbon ion from this particular ester attacks over here and this particular product will be formed when the carbon ion from this system attacks over here so if we consider two different esters where each containing two alpha hydrogen atoms there is a possibility of getting four different products <coughs> this particular possibility can be reduced by using an ester containing no alpha hydrogen or at the most only one alpha hydrogen why i have mentioned only one alpha hydrogen because we know that if one alpha hydrogen atom is present then that particular molecule can't form normal or self clazen ester condensation reaction under normal circumstances common esters having no alpha hydrogen atoms are dithyl ester of oxalic acid 
ethyl ester of formic acid, diethyl ester of carbonic acid, and ethyl ester of benzoic acid. It is worthwhile to mention that, at, that as we move from right to left, the reactivity of these molecules will definitely increase. However, with the ester, however, with the ester, having two alpha hydrogens, the possibility of self-condensation reaction still remains. Let us consider a pair of molecules, CHCWT and CH3CH2CW. If we have, if we have a mixture of these two molecules and sodium ethoxide, if it is added, then we will never obtain four different products, but we will definitely obtain two products. Why two products? This particular product will be the self ester condensation product, and this particular product is the crossed ester condensation product. That is why I have mentioned. <clears throat> However, with the ester having two alpha hydrogens, the possibility of self-condensation remains. This possibility may be reduced by using the following technique. What is the technique? The ester having no alpha hydrogen or one alpha hydrogen is taken with a base. Then the ester containing two alpha hydrogens should be added in a dropwise manner. In this way, we can minimize the formation of this particular product, but uh, some, but a little amount will still be there. <clears throat> Ketones can also participate in pleasant ester condensation reaction. <clears throat> This, this particular concept is referred to as mixed Claisen condensation. As we all know that ketones are more acidic than ester, they are deprotonated before the ester has a chance to undergo self-condensation. Uh, generally, what we observe, the pKa of alpha hydrogens of ordinary ketones lies in the range 20 to 21, but the pKa of alpha hydrogen of an ester generally lies in the range of uh, 24 to 25. <clears throat> this is also an important point. Ketones have lower tendency to undergo self-aldol condensation under such basic medium. <clears throat> if we have a ketone-like cyclohexanone, and if we have an ester like this, then obviously these two molecules will follow mixed pleasant ester condensation reaction. This is another concept of intramolecular mixed pleasant, and the product is going to be just like this. These two are very important points. If the ketone is unsymmetrical, if the ketone is unsymmetrical, then it is obvious that the reaction will take place from that alpha carbon, which contains at least two hydrogens, as kept Three, that is the formation of dicarbonyl enolate is essential. When both the alpha carbons contains two hydrogen atoms, then the reaction proceeds at the less substituted alpha carbon as the reaction is expected to proceed by the abstraction of more acidic hydrogen from the less hindered alpha carbon of the ketone. These two points are extremely important. If the ketone is an unsymmetrical one, then the reaction will take place from that particular end, which is having two alpha hydrogen atoms. And now, and now, if both the alpha carbon contains two hydrogen atoms, then the reaction will proceed from the less substituted alpha carbon, as the reaction is expected to proceed by the abstraction of more acidic hydrogen from the less hindered alpha carbon of the ketone. <clears throat> Now, let us discuss very, very important feature, <clears throat> pleasant ester condensation from a retrosynthetic point of view. As all of us know that using pleasant ester condensation, we may obtain an 1,3-dicarbonyl compound of type this. Now, to design its synthesis, we have to understand the following technique. Dear students, please be careful. <clears throat> Let us consider, we need to synthesize this particular 
one free dicarbonyl compound. <clears throat> it doesn't matter whether your molecule is a symmetrical one free dicarbonyl or your molecule is an unsymmetrical one free dicarbonyl. Doesn't matter. Please relax. <clears throat> what you what you have to do? You have to mark. You have to mark. You have to mark any carbonyl carbon according to your choice. Let me mark this particular carbonyl carbon. Let me mark this particular carbonyl carbon. That means carbon number three. So you have to mark a particular carbonyl carbon according to your wish, according to your choice. <clears throat> then, then you have to disconnect. Then you have to disconnect that particular CC bond, which comes first while moving from the marked carbonyl to the other carbonyl. So, <clears throat> so if I mark this particular carbonyl carbon according to my wish, according to my choice, then I have to disconnect this particular CC bond because this particular CC bond comes first while moving from the marked carbonyl to the other carbonyl. Obviously, I will get two such fragments. Obviously, I will get two such fragments. <clears throat> Both the fragments are having one incomplete carbon. Now, now we have to add now we have to add one OET group. Now we have to add one OET group to that particular fragment where the carbonyl carbon is incomplete. And we have to add one hydrogen atom to that particular fragment where normal sp3 carbon is incomplete. What my point? So what we have to do? This is my one free dicarbonyl compound. And I need to synthesize this molecule using the concept of Claes and ester condensation reaction. Then what is then what is going to be the way out? We have to mark a single carbonyl carbon according to my choice, according to my wish. Then I have to disconnect that particular CC sigma bond, which comes first while moving from marked carbonyl to the other carbonyl. So I have to disconnect this particular CC bond, obviously, I'll be getting two such fragments. Both the fragments are having one incomplete carbon. Now I am going to add one OET group to that particular fragment where carbonyl carbon is incomplete, and, uh, and I have to add one single hydrogen atom to that particular fragment where a normal sp3 carbon is incomplete. So these are going to be my starting materials in order to synthesize an 1,3 dicarbonyl compound like this. Few more examples for your better understanding. Let us synthesize this particular 1,3 dicarbonyl compound. So what do you have to do? You have to mark any particular carbonyl carbon. <clears throat> let us consider that I am quite fond of this particular carbon. So let me mark this particular carbon. This, this particular carbonyl carbon. Then I have to disconnect the fast CC bond. Then I have to disconnect the fast CC bond, that particular CC bond, which comes first while moving from the marked carbonyl to the other carbonyl. Obviously, I'll be getting two such fragments. I shall add one OET group to that particular fragment, which contains incomplete carbonyl carbon and I have to add one hydrogen atom to that particular fragment where the sp3 carbon is incomplete. In this way, I can predict what is going to be my starting material in order to obtain a product like this via Claisen ester condensation reaction. This is another example. Let me mark this particular carbonyl carbon. Then I have to disconnect this particular CC bond because this CC bond comes first while moving from this marked carbonyl to the other carbonyl. So I am getting two such fragments. Now I have to add one, e, one OET group to that particular fragment where carbonyl carbon is incomplete and I have to add one hydrogen atom in that particular fragment where the sp3 carbon is incomplete. Alkylation of alpha carbon can be possible 
using Claisen ester condensation reaction. Believe me, it is an important application of CEC, that means Claisen ester condensation reaction. If we are having a molecule like cyclohexanum, no, and no, if we no, add, no. am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Dr. Okay. Krishna. Audible. Okay. If we are having a molecule like cyclohexanum, and if we add dithyl oxalate under basic medium in presence of sodium methoxide in ethanol, we will definitely obtain a mixed pleasant ester condensation reaction. And the product is going to be a neutral beta keto ester like this. When this particular compound is heated in presence of iron glass powder, then some decarbonylation reaction will be there. And we will obtain a product like this. Dear students, you can understand that this molecule is a beta keto ester. This molecule is an 1,3 dicarbonyl compound. This molecule contains one acidic hydrogen atom here. So, if we treat this molecule in presence of a base, followed by the addition of alkyl halide, we will be able to introduce one alkyl group here instead of one hydrogen. So the product will be just like this. Since this molecule can be considered to be an beta keto ester, so if we hydrolyze this molecule, we will obtain some beta keto acid, which on mild heating, will follow an easy decarboxylation and the final product is nothing but the mono alpha alkylated version of the mother molecule. Got it? Then the concluding remarks of Claisen ester condensation reaction. Using Claisen ester condensation, we get a 1,3 dicarbonyl compound having at least one alpha hydrogen with respect to two carbonyl groups. The alpha carbon can be alkylated by the treatment with base followed by an alkyl halide. If at least one of the two carbonyl functions is ester, it can be removed easily by hydrolysis followed by decarboxylation. The combination of F up to facts makes Claisen ester condensation a versatile synthetic reaction. Thank you. <clears throat> the second reaction <clears throat> that we'll discuss today is very, very famous. Aldol condensation reaction. <clears throat> Aldol condensation reaction is a means of forming carbon-carbon bonds in organic chemistry. This particular reaction was discovered independently by the Russian chemist Alexander Borodin in the year 1869 and by the French chemist Charles Roux in the year 1872. The, this reaction combines two carbonyl compounds to form a new beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. These products are known as aldols from aldehyde plus alcohol, a structural motif seen in many of the products. Now let me go into the detail of aldol condensation reaction. Let us consider that my starting material is an acetaldehyde molecule. If we add which minus to acetaldehyde, obviously these two will follow normal acid-base reaction. And the equilibrium direction will be in the left-hand side. Why? Because here we are getting strong acid and strong base from weak acid and weak base. The pK value of, of the alpha hydrogen of acetaldehyde is around 20 to 21, and the pK of water is around 15.7. So obviously, this is the stronger acid, this one is the weaker acid, and no doubt, the direction of equilibrium will be in the left-hand side. Since the equilibrium of step one is mainly lying towards the left, so, the proportion of unreacted acetaldehyde is much, much higher than the proportion of the conjugate base or enolate 
thus formed after step one. This particular conjugate base or enolic then follows some sort of nucleophilic addition type of reaction on this carbonyl carbon. And what we obtain is a nucleophilic addition product. Just like Clezane, similar problems are here as well. Here in step one, the equilibrium is lying in the backward way. But in step two, an almost one is to one equilibrium is there. That means that up to step two, the net equilibrium is in the left hand side. But here also, step three is the severe. Here in step three, an acid base reaction takes place between such alkoxide and water and we are getting some weak acid and weak bases from strong acid and strong bases. That is the reason that why the direction of equilibrium in step three is lying in the right hand side. So here step three plays the instrumental role. Step three plays the pivotal role to drive the overall equilibrium in our desired direction. The end product is beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. Often this beta hydroxy carbonyl compound is dehydrated following such type of E1CB pathway. And then the end product becomes alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. Now the question arises whether ketone molecules will take part in aldol condensation reaction or not. As we all know that acetone molecule can be considered to be the simplest ketone of the universe. If we perform <coughs> aldol condensation under basic medium on this simplest ketone of the universe, we will definitely obtain an aldol product. But try to follow the yield. Only 2% yield is there. So the question is why? As we all know that in step one, as we all know that in step one of aldol condensation, the equilibrium is mainly lying in the backward direction. But here, Apart from step one, in step two also, the equilibrium is lying in the backward edge. So this is becoming quite impossible for step three to drive the backlog of two steps in the forward way. This is the reason why the yield of self aldol condensation product is only around 2%. Let me explain why step two betrays here. <clears throat> to understand why here in step two, the equilibrium is also lying in the backward way. To understand this particular concept, we have to throw some light on the famous concept of Barshi Dunich trajectory. This particular concept is named after two eminent physicists. One is Bajji and the other one is Dunich. They actually proved this particular concept with the help of some crystallographic experiment. What is BD trajectory? Let me tell you in brief. BD trajectory refers to the 170 degree angle of attack of nucleophiles when they attack a carbonyl carbon. It can be considered a compromise of Two effects. This angle of attack is a result of a compromise between the maximum overlap of the homo of the nucleophile with the pi star lumo of the carbonyl group and minimum repulsion of the homo of the nucleophile by electron density in the carbonyl pi bond. So let me repeat again this particular angle of attack is a result of compromise between maximum overlap of the homo of the nucleophile with pi star of the carbonyl group and minimum repulsion 
of the homo of the nucleophile by electron density in the carbonyl pi bond. If if any portion of the molecule, if any portion of the molecule comes in the way of Bergedonich trajectory, will greatly reduce the rate of addition. And this is an important reason why ketones are less reactive than aldehydes. This is the angle of approach. This is the angle of approach. If this particular molecule has to follow aldol condensation under a basic medium, then the conjugate base from this particular system has to attack over there. And this particular approach of this nucleophilic center to this electrophilic center is going to be extremely prevented due to the barge to niche requirement. However, however, in however in using <laughs> <clears throat> Am I audible? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, thank you. However, however, using insoluble BOH hole to contained in the thimble of a soft extractor, the yield can be improved by around 71%. Here, soft extractor helps the recycling procedure follow to it continuous separation of the product from the catalyst as it is formed. I am not going into the detail of substrate extractor. Just I am mentioning a few important points for your better understanding. <clears throat> the solvent is heated to reflux. The solvent vapor travels up a distillation on and flows into the chamber housing the thimble of solid. The condenser ensures that any solvent vapor cools and drips back down into the chamber housing the uh, solid material. The chamber containing the solid material slowly fills with one solvent. Some of the desired compound dissolves in the one solvent. When the soft slate chamber is almost full, the chamber is emptied by the siphon. The solvent is returned again to the distillation flask. The thimble ensures that the rapid motion of the solvent does not transport any solid material to the steel pot. The cycle may be allowed to repeat many times over hours or days. During each cycle, a portion of the non-volatile compound dissolves in the solvent. After many cycles, the desired compound is concentrated in the distillation flask. The advantage of this system is that instead of many portions of the warm solvent being passed through the sample, just one batch of solvent is recycled again and again. After extraction, the solvent is removed, typically by means of a rotary evaporator, yielding the extracted compound. The non-soluble portion of the extracted solid remains in the thimble and is usually discarded. <clears throat> now, let me discuss the very important concept, crossed aldol condensation. <clears throat> if we use two different carbonyl compounds where each of them contains alpha hydrogen atom, better to say enolizable alpha hydrogen atom. There is a possibility of the formation of four different products. Let us consider a mixture of acetaldehyde and propanol. If I add sodium hydroxide, rather aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide in the mixture of acetaldehyde and propanol, I will be getting four different products. This particular product is nothing but the self aldol condensation product of acetaldehyde. This particular product is nothing but the self aldol condensation product of propanol. These, these two products are the crossed aldol products. This product is formed when the anion from acetaldehyde attacks over there. And this particular product is formed when the anion from propanol attacks over here. 
So I am getting four different products. Since I am getting four different products, it becomes a difficult task to separate my desired product from the mixture of four such molecules. And also, the yield of my desired product is going to be extremely low. So, what is the way out? The possibility of obtaining four different products can be reduced using a carbonyl compound containing no alpha hydrogen in the forms of formaldehyde or aromatic acid. Let us consider a mixture of benzaldehyde and acetaldehyde. And if aqueous solution of NaOH is added into it, I shall definitely obtain this particular cross tildal product along with this cross tildal product a little amount of self elder product will also be there. I have mentioned it here that however, the possibility of self-condensation remains with the carbonyl compound having alpha hydrogen atom. So this is the self-condensation product. What is the way out then? By using the carbonyl compound, by using the carbonyl compound, by taking the carbonyl compound, having no alpha hydrogen with alkali, followed by the addition of carbonyl compound containing alpha hydrogen is added in a dropwise manner, exactly what we did in the case of crossed Claisen-Ester condensation reaction. This concept is extremely important. Please be careful. <clears throat> this particular concept is known as directed aldol condensation reaction. What is directed aldol condensation? Here I am the director. I will govern my molecules, what to do or what not to do. The remote control is now in my hand. <clears throat> Let us discuss what we can do here. The problem of aldol condensation is that the problem of aldol condensation is that in step one, the equilibrium, the acid base equilibrium, is mainly lying in the backward. That means the proportion of the unreacted carbonyl compound is always much higher than the proportion of the enolate or conjugate base or carbon ion, whatever you can say, is getting generated. So, there is a chance of self aldol condensation reaction. Try to follow this line. Problem arises as the equilibrium is lying in the back side. Hence, the formed carbon ion can participate in self aldol condensation reaction. If we are adding which minus to a carbonyl compound like this, the direction of equilibrium will be in the left hand side. So obviously, the possibility of self aldol condensation reaction is there. As here, the proportion of the unreacted carbonyl compound is much, much higher than the proportion of the conjugate base thus getting generated. So the possibility of self aldol condensation is there. But if the carbonyl compound is treated with LDA, what is LDA? Lithium diisopropyl amide. It is a very strong base because the pKa value of its conjugate acid is around 38. <clears throat> if, if the carbonyl compound is treated with LDA, then the equilibrium will be directed in the forward direction. If the equilibrium is directed in the forward direction, then there will be hardly any unreacted carbonyl compound present. So there will be no as such chance of self aldol condensation. And my story will go on. Here, I have shown an example. This is my mono-alpha substituted cyclohexanone molecule. I am adding lithium diisopropylamide LDA here. Obviously, these two will follow some sort of acid-base reaction. 
and the direction of equilibrium will be in the right hand side in a dedicated way almost exclusively almost exclusively <clears throat> we are getting this particular carbonyl we have to say this type of enolate almost exclusively now i am adding tmscl here trimethyl silyl chloride if i am adding tmscl here this particular o minus will follow nucleophilic substitution on this silicon center and what we will be getting is acetyl enol ether now we can separate this particular molecule from the mixture of so many system and even we can purify this particular compound as well after after performing the separation as well as the purification now if we add aqueous tbf what is tbf tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride what is the role of tbf tbf can be considered to be a source of fluoride especially in organic medium since the bond energy of silicon fluorine bond is extremely high so if we add tbf fluoride will attack here to form silicon fluorine bond and this particular osi bond is going to be cleaved after the cleavage of such osi bond it will be converted to o minus that means we will get some enolate that particular enolate will react with this aldehyde to give you this type of desired beta hydroxy carbonyl compound so here i am the director i am saying that you are going to form an enolate and that particular enolate will attack on that particular carbonyl compound now everything is under my control so believe me my dear students that if you ever obtain that if you ever want to obtain a particular cross channel product always try to follow this particular directed cross channel technique some some write up is there for your better understanding the example given here shows that how the enolate ion can be trapped by converting it to the enol trimethyl silyl ether this one this one this procedure is especially useful because the enol trimethyl silyl ether can be purified if necessary and then converted back to an enolate ion one way of achieving this conversion is by treating the enol trimethyl silyl ether with a solution containing fluoride ions this reaction this reaction of fluoride is a nucleophilic substitution at the silicon atom brought about by the fluoride ion fluoride ions have an extremely high affinity for silicon atoms because the sif bonds are very very strong <clears throat> this is the most important concept of aldol condensation <clears throat> the heading is tas stereoselectivity in aldol condensation <clears throat> and aldol condensation can create two asymmetric centers this is the beauty this is the beauty of organic chemistry this is the beauty of aldol condensation reaction what is the beauty you see that no asymmetric center is present in a molecule like this even no chiral center is present in a molecule like prcho but if these two molecules follow cross aldol reaction then the cross aldol product is going to be then then the cross aldol product then one of the cross aldol products is going to be just like this you see no asymmetric center was present in a molecule like this no asymmetric center was present in a molecule like this but here two dissimilar asymmetric centers are there that means four stereoisomeric forms are possible enantiomeric pair of syn enantiomeric pair of anti now let us follow the zimmerman fraxler model now let us follow the zimmerman fraxler model for the better understanding of this particular concept here comes the zt model 
It was in the year 1957, Howard Zimmerman and M.D. Drexler proposed that some aldol reactions have six-member transition states having a cheer conformation. This is now known as zimmerman Traxler model. <clears throat> if we have an unsymmetrical ketone like this, and if we add some metal-based base into this molecule, there is a possibility of getting two such enolates. One is E enolate, and the other one is Z enolate. E enolates, e enolates give rise to anti products, whereas Z enolates give rise to syn products. E enolates, e enolates, e enolates give rise to anti product, whereas Z enolate give rise to syn product. The factors that control selectivity are the preference for placing substituents equatorially in six membered cyclic transition states and the avoidance of seen pentane interactions respectively. Now, if the reaction is carried out under equilibrium condition by the use of relatively weak bases, such as hydroxide ion and long reaction times, then anti-product predominance via more stable transition state in the other general case, kinetic control is achieved by the use of very strong base, such as LDA, low temperature, and short reaction times. Let me explain. <clears throat> Since this particular compound is an unsymmetrical one, two enolates can be generated. This is the E enolate, and this is the Z enolate. Please Tell me, my dear students, that in between E enolate and Z enolate, which one is going to be comparatively much more stable? Obviously, the Z enolate. Why? Because in the case of E enolate, there is a steric interaction between two such groups. That means Z enolate is comparatively much more stable. Please, please keep it in your mind that although Z enolates are comparatively much more stable than, than that of E enolate, but, but the six-member cyclic TS generated from E enolate is comparatively more stable than the six-member cyclic TS developed from Z enolates. Why? <clears throat> because in this particular six-member cyclic TS, obtained from Z enolate, what we observe that one methyl group is present at the axial like position. So some so some sort of syn syn axial interactions are there, maybe. But no such problem is there in this particular TS. So undoubtedly the TS generated from E enolate is comparatively much more stable than the TS generated from Z enolate although Z enolate is more stable than E enolate. If we use, if we use a strong base like LDA, and if the temperature is extremely low, and if the reaction time period is also quite small, then the reaction will prefer to proceed via kinetically controlled Z enolate, and we will definitely obtain the same product. But, under equilibrium controlled condition, that is by using relatively weak base like OH minus, comparatively higher temperature and for prolonged time period, if we, if we carry out this particular reaction, then we will definitely obtain anti product via E enolate formation. So, <clears throat> so under kinetically controlled condition via Z enolate, we obtain syn product right? And under equilibrium control condition via E enolate, we are getting anti-product, right? <clears throat> this is a famous example. You see <clears throat> that this is a cyclic ketone and I am adding LDA here. LDA, LDA is a very strong base. 
the temperature is also quite low so what are we expecting we are expecting we are expecting <clears throat> that the reaction will proceed via the formation of z in all it and it will give us thin product right <clears throat> but here only anti product is formed although the reaction has been performed under kinetically controlled condition why because you should agree that z in all it <clears throat> can't be formed from a cyclic ketone like this a cyclic ketone like this can only give us e in all it whatever may be the situation whatever may be the situation whatever may be the nature of your base whatever may be your environment we will always obtain e in all it and via e in all it <clears throat> we can only obtain anti product preferential so this is an important example to be noted <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> now let us discuss aldol condensation from a retrosynthetic point of view when the product is alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound because we know that during the course of aldol condensation we can obtain an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound as our final product so let us study let us have a look on the retrosynthetic approach <clears throat> this is an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound what we can do is what we can do is if we want to synthesize this particular compound via aldol we should follow this particular technique what is the technique we should disconnect the c double bond c bond what i am saying we should disconnect this particular c double bond c bond if i disconnect this particular c double bond c bond then we will be getting two such fragments two such fragments one fragment one fragment contains the carbonyl functionality and the other fragment is totally devoid of carbonyl functionality what to do now now we have to add now we have to introduce rather one double bond o now we have to introduce rather a double bond o to that particular fragment which is devoid of carbonyl and we have to add two hydrogen atoms to that particular fragment which is containing the carbonyl compound <clears throat> i am repeating the concept again in order to synthesize an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound via aldol condensation pathway our technique our approach will be as follows we have to disconnect this particular molecule we have to disconnect this particular molecule we have to disconnect this particular molecule along this c double bond c then we will be getting two such fragments right this particular fragment is containing the carbonyl functionality okay but no such carbonyl functionality is present in this particular fragment what to do now we have to introduce one double bonded o to that particular fragment which is devoid of any carbonyl and and we have to add and we have to add and we have to add two hydrogen atoms to that particular fragment which is containing the carbonyl group so in this way so in this way we can get the idea of our starting materials which on aldol condensation can give us a product like this for your better understanding for your better understanding let us have a look this particular example in this particular example in this particular example we are having one c double bond c unit this molecule is basically an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound so this molecule can be synthesized easily by using intramolecular aldol condensation reaction 
better you want to know that what is going to be my setting material, right? What to do now? I have already told you. Please disconnect the C double one C bond. Then we will obtain two such fragments: the upper fragment and the lower fragment. The upper fragment contains the carbonyl part, but the lower fragment is devoid of carbonyl part, right? Now we should add one double bonded O to that particular fragment which is devoid of carbonyl, and we have to add two hydrogen atoms to that particular fragment which contains the carbonyl part. So this is going to be our starting material. Believe me, my dear students, that if we follow intramolecular aldol condensation on a molecule like this, we will be able to obtain a molecule like that. So this is the concept. <clears throat> Now let me discuss aldol condensation from a retrosynthetic point of view when the product is beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. <clears throat> as we have already discussed that during the course of aldol initially we obtain some beta hydroxy carbonyl compound which then follows some sort of dehydration to give us alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound so in the big universe if you ever observe an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound you can think of aldol condensation reaction and if if you observe some sort of beta hydroxy carbonyl compound you can also think of aldol condensation but my point now let me tell you that if we have a beta hydroxy carbonyl compound like this then how can i think of my starting materials my dear students the technique is very simple the technique is very simple follow me just drag just drag just drag this particular which bond towards this particular carbon and please break the fast cc bond that appears or that comes in the way towards other carbonyl what i have said just drag just drag this particular which bond towards this carbon and and disconnect the fast cc bond that comes in the way to other carbonyl disconnect that particular cc bond which comes which comes fast in the way to other carbonyl just disconnect that particular cc bond which comes fast in the way to the other carbonyl so if i follow such type of a disconnection technique i can easily understand that these are going to be my starting materials in order to obtain a beta hydroxy carbonyl compound like this got it this is another famous variety of aldol condensation believe me that aldol condensation can can also take place under acid catalyzed condition <clears throat> let me tell you the mechanism we are having a molecule like acetone if this particular carbonyl compound if this particular carbonyl compound is treated with an acid then obviously a certain portion of this molecule will be converted to an enol and some unreacted version will also be there now the enol plays the role of the nucleophile and it follows some nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl carbon of the unreacted protonated acetone after such type of a nucleophilic addition we will be able to obtain a beta hydroxy carbonyl compound like this and which on dehydration will give us an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound like that so we can perform aldol condensation both under basic medium as well as under acidic medium this is this is a wonderful observation please follow it carefully we are having two molecules one molecule is an enomat 
an innocent molecule, innocent with respect to aldol condensation, is benzaldehyde. And the other molecule is not so innocent. The other molecule is 2-butanol. <clears throat> and now we are interested <clears throat> to perform the cross aldol condensation, both under basic medium as well as under acidic medium. I am just focusing on the cross product, not at all on the cell product. So, if we perform aldol condensation <clears throat> in a mixture of two such compounds under basic medium, then the cross product is going to be just like this. And if we perform this reaction under acidic medium, then the cross aldol product obtained is going to be just like that. Dear students, I think you can differentiate these two molecules. Both these structures are not same, right? These two structures are not same, right? Now the question arises, why is the difference? <clears throat> Believe me, at the time when we are following the reaction under basic medium, which might should abstract that particular hydrogen atom, which is mostly acidic in nature. That means, while performing this reaction under alkaline medium, this particular carbon is going to be functionalized. As the hydrogen atoms attached here, they are comparatively much more acidic. So, while performing this reaction under alkaline medium, this particular carbon is going to be functionalized. This carbon will be attached to this particular carbon and the end product and the end cross product is going to be just like that. But if we perform this reaction under acidic medium, under acidic medium, under acid catalyzed condition, what actually happens? Under acid catalyzed condition, the, react the reaction actually takes place by the formation of some enol. Since this particular molecule since this particular molecule is an unsymmetrical one, so this molecule under acidic medium can form two different enols. One enol will be formed from the left hand side, and the other enol can be formed from the right hand side. Now the system will judge that in between two such enols, which one, which one is going to be comparatively much more stable? Obviously, the enol generated from the right hand side is having higher number of hyperconjugable hydrogen atoms. That is why the enol generated from the right hand side is going to be much more stable, and the enol generated from the right hand side is going to be the enol of interest in this particular reaction. If the enol generated from the right hand side plays the plays the leading role then we can then we can conclude that this particular carbon will be functionalized and the reaction will proceed involving this carbon only and the end cross product is going to be just like this so so what is going to be our conclusion so what is going to be our conclusion so our conclusion so our conclusion is going to be just like that so our conclusion is going to be just like that, that aldol condensation under acidic medium and aldol condensation under basic medium, they are complementary with respect to each other. So our conclusion is just like that, aldol condensation under acidic medium, aldol condensation under acidic medium and aldol condensation under basic medium, they are just complementary with respect to each other because Starting from the same starting compounds, we are getting different products. So if someone asks you to, to prepare a molecule like this using these two starting materials, then what you will follow? You should follow the base mediated aldol. And if someone asks you to synthesize a molecule like this, obviously using these two compounds, then you should follow acid catalyzed aldol. Got my point? <clears throat> This is another important concept, <clears throat> the reversibility of aldol, the reversibility of aldol. <clears throat> we have already studied the mechanism of 
aldol condensation. And we have found that during the course of aldol condensation, initially we obtain beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. What? Beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. What? Beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. Let me repeat again. Beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. Now you please tell me why I am repeating the beta hydroxy carbonyl compound this particular term four times. Why? Why I have repeated? I have repeated only because I have repeated only due to the fact that this particular molecule, this particular molecule, what is this molecule? You will tell me that this molecule is nothing but our very famous grandfather glucose of carbohydrate chemistry. Yes, this is no doubt a glucose molecule, but if you follow minutely, then you will see that this particular molecule is nothing but a beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. Alpha, beta, beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. So, so let me conclude that this particular glucose molecule can be considered to be an aldol product since it is a beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. This is a unique observation. Probably you have studied it in your carbohydrate chemistry classes. <clears throat> when glucose molecule is treated with calcium hydroxide and if the mixture is kept for, for several days, we will obtain alpha hydroxy acetaldehyde and erythrose molecule apart from mannose and fructose. So the big question arises, how does this two molecule form? Dear students, I have already told you that this particular molecule is a beta hydroxy carbonyl compound. That means this particular molecule can be considered to be an aldol condensation product. Under alkaline medium, do you know what is actually going to happen? Under alkaline medium, this particular beta hydroxy carbonyl compound is now following the reverse aldol condensation. How many steps are there? In aldol condensation reaction, tell me three steps are there. In step one, acid base reaction. In step two, a CC bond is going to be formed. A nucleophilic addition will be there. In step three, another acid base reaction is there. When this particular system is following reverse aldol, <clears throat> the first step will be, the first step here will be the reverse of step three in normal aldol. That means an acid base reaction. The second step will be the reverse of step two of normal aldol. In normal aldol in step two, what happens? We observe the formation of a CC bond. Here you see the CC bond is going to be broken. And in the last step is going to be the reverse of step one of normal aldol. That is another acid base reaction. Since aldol condensation reaction is a reversible reaction, so according to the principle of microscopic reversibility, this particular molecule will undergo reverse of aldol condensation and it will be fragmented into such two carbon unit and into such four carbon unit. That is why we can explain the formation of alpha hydroxyacetaldehyde and erythrose molecule. What my point? Thank you. The concluding remarks. Utilization of aldol condensation in biological and medicinal area has attracted considerable interest over the years as the aldol reaction is one of the most fundamental tools for the construction of new carbon-carbon bonds through the formation of beta hydroxycarbonyl and alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. Definitely, reversibility of aldol condensation adds a feather in the cap. The generation of new chiral center from a chiral molecules adds significance in this type of reaction. This is all about aldol condensation. <clears throat> now let us discuss addition of nucleophile to an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. <clears throat> 
originally defined by scientists are thermical. This reaction is the addition of an enolate of a ketone or aldehyde to an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound at the beta carbon. A comparatively newer definition proposed by Kohler is the one for addition of a doubly stabilized carbon nucleophile to an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. Some examples of nucleophiles include beta ketoesters, melonids, and some beta cyanoesters. The resulting product contains a highly useful 1,5 dioxygenated pattern. <clears throat> the Michael reaction or the Michael addition is the nucleophilic addition of a carbonyl or another nucleophile to an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound containing an electron withdrawing group. It belongs to the larger class of conjugate additions. This is one of the most useful methods for the formation of CC bonds, although many asymmetric variants exist. Some authors have brought the definition of, the definition of Michael addition to essentially refer to any one for addition reaction of alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. Others, however, insist that such a usage is an abuse of terminology and limit the Michael addition to the formation of carbon-carbon bonds through the addition of carbon nucleophiles. Let me discuss a brief history of the Michael addition reaction. <clears throat> Students, be careful. Follow these informations. <clears throat> the research done by Arthur Michael in the year 1887 at Tufts University was prompted by an 1884 publication by Conrad and Kurset on the reaction of ethyl 2 3 dipropionate with diethyl sodium malonate forming a cyclopropane derivative. Now it is recognized as involving two successive substitution reactions. <clears throat> two successive substitution reaction. This is the reaction by Conrad and Kurset. Michael was able to obtain, scientist Michael, Arthur Michael, Michael was able to obtain the same product. Follow my point. Michael was able to obtain the same product by replacing the propionate by 2-bromoacrylic acid ethyl ester and realized that this reaction could only work by assuming an addition reaction to the double bond of the acrylic acid. He then confirmed this assumption by reacting diethyl malonate and the ethyl ester of cinnamic acid, forming the very first Michael adapt. This is the example. <clears throat> In the same year, scientist Reynal Ludwig Lezen, the discoverer of Lezen ester condensation. In the same year, Reynal Ludwig Lezen claimed priority for the invention. He and Comnenus had observed addition products to double bonds as side products earlier in the year 1883 while investigating condensation reactions of malonic acid with aldehydes. However, <clears throat> according to biographer Takashi, this claim is without any merit. So the credit goes to Michael not at all, scientist Pleasant. <clears throat> you see that this particular molecule is an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. If some nucleophile is added to a molecule like this, two possibilities are there. Option number one, nucleophile can attach itself with the carbonyl carbon to give us such type of an one to addition product or the nucleophile can attach itself with the beta carbon to give us such type of an 1,4 addition product. <clears throat> My dear students, please tell me that in this mother molecule, I am having two important functionalities. One is C double bond O 
and the other one is C double bond C. We know <clears throat> that the bond energy of C double bond O is around 166 kilocalorie per mole, whereas the bond energy of C double bond C <clears throat> is around 145 kilocalorie per mole. So it can be concluded that CO bond is stronger. The bond energy of C double bond O is comparatively greater, higher than the bond energy of C double bond C, right? <clears throat> During such one to addition product formation, the C double bond O is getting lost, but C double bond C is still there. However, during the formation of one four addition product, C double bond C is lost, but C double bond O is still there. I think you have understood the difference. <clears throat> Let me repeat again. My mother molecule is an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds and two functional groups are there. One is C double bond O and the other one is C double bond C. We know that the bond energy of C double bond O is around 166 and the bond energy of C double bond C is around 145. Obviously, C double bond O is much, much stronger than that of C double bond C, right? So if our nucleophile attacks on C double bond O, we will obtain one to addition product. During the formation of such one to addition product, C double bond O is going to be destroyed, but C double bond C is still there. But during the formation of one for addition product, C double bond C is destroyed, but C double bond O is there. So we can conclude, so we can conclude that one for addition product is comparatively much more stable than the one to addition product as during the formation of one for addition product the stronger the stabler c double bond o is still retained <clears throat> my dear students please acknowledge that the energy of activation of one to addition product is comparatively much much lower then the energy of activation of one for addition product. It is always easier for a nucleophile to attack at the carbonyl carbon than to attack on the beta carbon. That means, that means the energy of activation of one to addition product is going to be much, much lower, but the energy of activation of the one for addition product is comparatively higher. Although one for addition product is much more stable than the one to addition product. Try to follow my data. One for addition can be considered to be thermodynamically controlled as the are more stable C double bond O is preserved, whereas during one to addition less stable C double bond C is preserved. That is, one to addition is considered to be kinetically controlled. One to addition is expected to be more reversible when the nucleophile is comparatively more stable. The carbonyl carbon, this particular carbonyl carbon, this particular carbonyl carbon is a harder acidic center with respect to the beta carbon of alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. This particular beta carbon can be considered to be a softer acidic center. Now the nucleophile, which is a comparatively softer base, will prefer the beta carbon and that particular nucleophile, which is comparatively harder one, will prefer the one to addition product, obviously by attacking on the carbonyl carbon. That means as the, as the hardness of the anion will increase, the proportion of the one to addition product will increase and as the softness of the anion will increase, the proportion of one fourth addition product will increase. The Michael addition is an important atom economical method for diastereoselective and enantioselective CC bond formation. A classical tandem sequence of Michael and Eldol is known as Robinson annulation reaction, the famous. Robinson annulation reaction. <clears throat> Please follow this particular reaction. This is 
ethyl acetic acid affects the beta keto ester if i add sodium ethoxide in ethanol obviously this molecule will undergo an acid base reaction and we will definitely obtain a carbonyl like this to this particular carbonyl if we are adding mbk methyl vinyl ketone then this particular carbonyl will follow michael addition reaction to such mbk system and it will give us finally a product like this this particular product is having some beta keto ester linkage you see some beta keto ester linkage so if i follow hydrolysis reaction this particular beta keto ester will be hydrolyzed after the hydrolysis of such beta keto ester we will be getting a particular beta keto acid which on mild heating will undergo an easy decarboxylation so at the end of the day so at the end of the day at the end of our game we will obtain this particular molecule 1 2 3 4 5 so at the end of the day we are going to obtain this particular 15 dicarbonyl compound you will see that people usually claim that during michael addition reaction we will obtain 15 dicarbonyl compound in this way we can obtain 15 dicarbonyl compound now now if we treat this molecule with alkali under some high temperature then obviously this molecule will follow some sort of intramolecular aldol to give you this particular cyclic alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound so my dear students michael followed by aldol michael michael followed by aldol we are getting a cyclic compound like this no doubt this is the example of robinson annulation reaction one point to share one important point to share i have discussed claisen ester condensation first then i have discussed then i have discussed aldol condensation now i am discussing the michael addition you can ask me that why you are following such type of sequence are you doing it abruptly are you doing it according to your choice maybe you are well prepared with claisen not not that much prepared with michael so you started your discussion with claisen now you are discussing michael no my dear students my intention is something different here you see that <clears throat> what are the substrates what are the substrates for michael addition reaction what are the substrates for michael addition reaction during the course of michael addition we need an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound which which can be considered to be an aldol product during the course of michael addition we need this type of anion from beta keto ester which can be considered to be the claisen ester condensation product i hope that you have understood my intention actually the claisen ester condensation product that is the anion of some beta keto ester and the aldol condensation product that means alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound so the claisen product and aldol product they are the substrates for michael addition reaction and the michael addition product is something different so i can't discuss michael addition reaction to all of you without explaining the concept of claisen and aldol so michael comes third in my discussion today now let us discuss michael addition reaction from a retrosynthetic point of view this is quite simple you please tell me <coughs> you please tell me what actually happens during the course of michael addition reaction we are adding a nucleophile to an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound the nucleophile is attaching itself to the beta carbon 
and the C double bond C bond is getting destroyed. This is the simplistic version of Michael addition, right? On the other way around, we can claim it in this type of way that if you ever observe, if you ever observe a nucleophile, if you ever observe a nucleophile present at the beta carbon with respect to a carbonyl group, you can think of Michael addition reaction in order to synthesize a molecule like that. Let me repeat again. If, if in the beta carbon, this is alpha, this is beta. If in the beta carbon with respect to carbonyl group, if in the beta carbon with respect to carbonyl group, if you ever observe someone which can play the role of a potential nucleophile, you can blindly think of the Michael addition reaction. If at the beta carbon with respect to carbonyl group, if at the beta carbon with respect to carbonyl group, if you ever find someone playing the role of a nucleophile, you can always think of Michael addition reaction. So, if the beta carbon of my carbonyl group contains someone which can be considered to be a potential nucleophile, then I can easily think of the concept of Michael addition reaction. What to do now? I have to disconnect the bond between beta carbon and nucleophile. And then I have to introduce a pi bond between alpha and beta. In this way, I'll be able to identify my starting compound, right? Let me discuss the synthesis of this particular molecule. Please be relaxed and tell me how can I carry out the synthesis of this particular molecule. What type of, mo what type of molecule is it? This particular molecule is basically an example of beta keto ester. So this molecule can be synthesized using Claisen ester condensation, right? What to do now? Let me mark one particular carbonyl carbon. Let me mark this particular carbonyl carbon. If I mark this particular carbonyl carbon, then I have to disconnect this particular CC bond because this particular CC bond comes first while moving from the marked carbonyl to the other carbonyl. Then I'll be getting two such fragments. This particular fragment is having some incomplete carbonyl carbon, so I have to add one OET group here. This particular fragment is having some incomplete sp3 carbon. That means I have to add some hydrogen here. So my concept is, if I if I follow intramolecular Claisen or Dickman condensation on a molecule like this, then I'll be able to obtain a product like that. Got it? Now the question arises that how can I synthesize a molecule like this? Please follow this structure carefully. This is the carbonyl group, right? This is the alpha carbon. This is the beta carbon. With respect to carbonyl group, the beta carbon is containing someone which can play the role of the nucleophile. That means I can synthesize this molecule, obviously using the concept of Michael addition reaction. I have to disconnect the bond between beta carbon and nucleophile and I have to introduce one pi bond between alpha and beta. So this is going to be my starting material. I have to consider these two molecules in the ratio of 1 is to 2. Then only I will be able to obtain a molecule like this. Got it? This is another example. This particular molecule is an example of cyclic alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. So in order to synthesize this particular compound, I have to disconnect this particular C double bond C as it is quite obvious that this molecule can be synthesized using the concept of aldol condensation as the molecule is nothing but an example of alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl unit. 
so i have to disconnect this particular cc bond after disconnecting this particular cc bond i am getting two such fragments the upper fragment is containing the carbonyl part but the lower fragment is devoid of any carbonyl part what to do now i have to introduce one double bonded o to that particular unit which is devoid of carbonyl and i have to introduce two hydrogen to that particular unit which is containing the carbonyl functionality so this is going to be my starting material and if i follow intramolecular aldol condensation on a molecule like this then i will be able to obtain a product like that now the big question arises that how can i obtain a molecule like this what is the beauty of this molecule follow my nucleic this is my carbonyl group right this is alpha carbon okay this is beta carbon right you see that with respect to this beta carbon with respect to this beta carbon this particular with respect to this beta carbon this particular carbon is connected which can be considered to be a potential nucleophile that means that here in this molecule we are having some potential nucleophile connected with this beta carbon so we can easily obtain this molecule using the concept of michael addition reaction what is going to be my starting materials my starting material is going to be just like this why because i have to disconnect the bond between beta carbon and potential nucleophile and i have to introduce a pi bond in between alpha and beta so this is going to be my starting material this is going to be my nucleophile of interest and if i follow michael addition reaction using this to compound i'll be able to obtain a system like that which on intramolecular aldol will give me my desired product this particular molecule can be easily synthesized using the concept of intramolecular cleasing that i have already discussed <coughs> so the concluding remarks michael addition reaction not only helps us to obtain 1,5 dicarbonyl compounds but also to obtain those compounds where a nucleophile is connected to beta carbon of a carbonyl compound michael addition reaction is extremely important in the field of organic synthesis now let us discuss another famous reaction this is known as parkin reaction <clears throat> the parkin reaction is an organic reaction developed by english chemist william henry parkin that is used to make cinnamic acids parkin reaction gives an alpha beta unsaturated aromatic acid by the aldol type condensation not exactly aldol condensation of an aromatic aldehyde and an acid anhydride obviously in the presence of an alkali salt of the acid here the alkali salt acts as a base catalyst said william henry parkin was a british chemist and entrepreneur best known for his accidental discovery of the first synthetic organic dye mauveen made from aniline though he failed in trying to synthesize quinine for the for the treatment of malaria he became successful in the field of dyes after his first discovery at the age of 18 only parkin set up a factory to produce the dye industry lee the professor of business history at the university of leeds once said that by laying the foundation for the synthetic organic chemical industry parkin helped to revolutionize the world of fashion so this is all about parkin reaction let me explain you the mechanistic detail of parkin reaction <clears throat> dear students uh, if you follow five different books of organic chemistry you will see at least three to four different mechanisms of parkin reaction 
But I think that this particular mechanism is the most, most plausible. Let me explain it to you. <clears throat> this is my acetic anhydride molecule. When acetic anhydride is treated with sodium acetate, obviously these two molecules will follow some sort of acid-base reaction. And we will definitely obtain the conjugate base of the acetic anhydride. The conjugate base of the acetic anhydride will now play the role of the nucleophile. And it will now undergo some sort of nucleophilic addition on the carbonyl carbon of benzaldehyde molecule. And this is going to be our nucleophilic addition product. Okay. Now, intramolecular. Now, intramolecular. See, now intramolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction leading to the transfer of acyl group to form some sort of carboxylate ion. I think you can understand that this particular intramolecular nucleophilic substitution can only follow, can only proceed via a six-member cyclic pierce because you see that six atoms are involved. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So intramolecular nucleophilic substitution leading to the transfer of acyl group to form carboxylate anion. Now this carboxylate anion, now this carboxylate anion reacts with another acetic anhydride to form this type of a mixed anhydride. Now elimination reaction of mixed anhydride takes place via some E2 mechanism. And the final product is going to be just like this. This particular product, if it is hydrolyzed, then it will give us this famous molecule known as transcinamic acid. <clears throat> the salient features of Parkin reaction. During the course of Parkin reaction, styrene is formed as a minor product through the carboxylative elimination. You see, uh, from this particular system, from this particular system, from this particular system, through decarboxylative elimination, we can obtain styrene as one of the side products. <clears throat> the, formation of, the formation of styrene indirectly advocates the formation of this type of an carboxylate anion intermediate. Here, aromatic aldehydes are used. Listen to it carefully. Here, aromatic aldehydes are used to avoid the self aldol condensation. <clears throat> Often students ask that, is it possible for acetaldehyde to undergo Parkin reaction? No. Since we are doing this reaction under basic medium, and if acetaldehyde is our starting material, then the possibility of self aldol condensation reaction is there. So we should use aromatic aldehyde to avoid the self aldol condensation. Here, the acid anhydride and the corresponding sodium or potassium salt of the carboxylic acid is used to avoid the formation of intermediate mixed anhydride, which will lead to the formation of a mixture of alpha-beta unsaturated acids. This is a very, very important point. Since we are doing our work, using acetic anhydride, which is the anhydride of acetic acid. So as the source of a base, we should consider the sodium or potassium salt of that particular acid only. Again, I am repeating this particular point. Here, the acid anhydride and the corresponding sodium or potassium salt of the carboxylic acid is used to avoid the formation of, to avoid the formation of intermediate mixed anhydride, which will lead to the formation of a mixture of alpha-beta unsaturated acids. Other aromatic aldehydes like furfural can also undergo Parkin reaction to give us their corresponding products. Now the big question from the student's front is <clears throat> why Parkin reaction leads to the formation of transcinamic acid only? You see, that this is the molecule. This is the molecule. Let me go back. 
this is the molecule ph ch oac ch2 co oac right this is the molecule ph ch oac ch2 co oac <clears throat> this is the molecule on which the elimination reaction actually takes place <clears throat> this is the molecule on which e2 reaction actually takes place who are the eliminating groups obviously the hydrogen atoms present on carbon 2 and the acetate present on carbon 1 as we all know that during the course of e2 reaction the eliminating groups should be anti peric planar with respect to each other due to high extent of overlap so we need the hydrogen atom of carbon 2 and the ococh3 of carbon 1 to remain anti peric planar with respect to each other this is possible in this particular conformation the front carbon is carbon 2 and the back carbon is carbon 1 in carbon 2 two, two hydrogen atoms are there and in between two hydrogen atoms one hydrogen atom is well anti peric planar with respect to the leaving group <clears throat> my dear students please acknowledge that another conformer is possible which is just like just keeping the back carbon fixed if we rotate the front carbon by an angle of 120 degree in a clockwise manner then we will be able to get this type of conformation right now let us compare the stability of these two conformers in this particular conformer two gauge in two gauge interactions are there one gauge interaction between these two groups and the other gauge interaction is between these two groups but in this particular conformer only one gauge interaction is there sincere sincere only one gauge interaction is there that means that this that this particular conformer is comparatively much more stable than that particular conformer e2 reaction takes place on this particular conformer and obviously the stereochemistry of the final product alkene is trans with respect to each other this is the reason why do we obtain trans cinnamic acid during the course of parkin reaction this is a very very famous molecule this molecule is known as coumarin coumarin is a colorless crystalline solid with a sweet odor resembling the scent of vanillin and a bitter taste it is found in many plants where it may serve as a chemical defense against predators by inhibiting synthesis of vitamin k a related compound is used as the prescription drug warfarin an anticoagulant to inhibit formation of blood clots deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism coumarin can be synthesized by parkin reaction using salicylaldehyde acetic anhydride and sodium acetate coumarins are very significant in the treatment of cancer and is used in the treatment of prostate cancer renal cells carcinoma and leukemia <clears throat> coumarins are found to have good maintenance therapy in case of melanoma and also found to inhibit the spread of tumors let me discuss the mechanism of coumarin formation with the help of parkin reaction <clears throat> here we are having acetic anhydride and we are adding sodium acetate into it obviously these two molecules will follow an acid base reaction and we will be getting the conjugate base of acetic anhydride now this particular anion of acetic anhydride will follow nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl carbon of salicylaldehyde and we will be getting such type of a nucleophilic addition product now intramolecular nucleophilic substitution via a six member cyclic ps leading to the transport of acyl group to form carboxylate anion again
हेलो हाँ जी सनी जी ये कुछ हुआ है ना क्या हुआ है हाँ क्योंकि हाँ मुझे भी नहीं दिख रहा है मैं कोशिश कर रही हूँ वो एंटर कर रहे होंगे अभी है ना ओके पार्टिसिपेंट्स आई थिंक सर के साथ में कोई प्रॉब्लम हुआ है मैं पता कर रही हूँ वेट फॉर टू मिनट्स शायद उनका बैंडविथ लो होगा
participants please switch off your video i can see dr anita tiwari please switch off your video because bandwidth is very low so when you will keep on switching on your videos there will be problems madam please uh, switch off your video dr anita tiwari please switch off your video Okay, Dr. Mitra, I have joined uh, again. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Please tell me, ma'am, that uh, that at which stage I got disconnected. You were at uh, the last slide which you were hosting, na? Uh, after that, I just. Okay, okay. So the mechanism of Kumari information, right? Yeah, yeah. Just take okay. a. Uh, Ma'am, is my screen visible? Yeah, definitely. It's perfectly visible. Thank you. Okay. Am I audible? And my screen is visible, right? Yes, Dr. Mitra, you are audible. Okay. Also. Okay. okay, thank you. <clears throat> so let us discuss uh, the formation of Kumar information. What actually happens is that uh, sodium acetate undergoes acid-based reaction with a molecule like acetic anhydride. And do we basically obtain the conjugate base of acetic anhydride? Now, the conjugate base of acetic anhydride follows some nucleophilic addition reaction on the carbonyl carbon. And what we obtain a nucleophilic addition product, just like this. Now, this particular nucleophilic addition product, now it undergoes intramolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction, leading to the transfer of acyl group to form carboxylate anion. And this reaction proceeds via a six-member cyclic disc. Now, this particular carboxylate anion again reacts with another acetic anhydride molecule to generate this type of mixed anhydride. So till now, all these steps are very much similar to that of the formation of transcinamic acid. This particular step is the most important one. Why? Because this is the structure of my mixed anhydride this is the structure of my comarine. Now, two possibilities are there. Possibility number one, elimination, elimination reaction fast, followed by ring closure. And the possibility number two is ring closure fast, followed by elimination. Got it? If, if elimination reaction takes place initially, then we will obtain an alkyl like this. As we all know that in chemistry, we need to address two important points always. One is the reactivity and the other one is orientation. Both the features are equally important in order to have a successful chemical reaction in organic chemistry. So what actually happens that if elimination reaction takes place initially, we will definitely obtain an alkene like this. This particular molecule, this particular molecule this particular molecule has the reactivity, but here the orientation is missing because carbon in carbon and this particular oxygen, they are lying far apart. Since they are lying far apart, so this is not at all possible for this oxygen to attack over there and to follow ring closure to form a coumarine molecule like this. So this is not possible. 
because reactivity for ring closure is present, but the orientation is somehow missing. So this is not possible for us to obtain a product like this from a system like that. But if ring closing takes place initially, if ring closing takes place initially, if intramolecular cyclization, if ring closing takes place initially, followed by elimination, then we can easily obtain a molecule like coumarin. So we are bound to consider that elimination reaction followed by ring closure will never give you coumarin molecule, but ring closure followed by elimination can give you coumarin molecule. So this is an important point to note that during the formation of coumarin molecule here in step five, we need, we need ring closure first followed by elimination and not elimination followed by ring closure. Now the concluding remarks, Parkin reaction gives an alpha beta unsaturated aromatic acid. The concepts of Parkin reaction has been used in the formation of various natural products. Now let me discuss the last reaction of today's session, Wittig reaction. Wittig reaction. <coughs> Scientist George Wittig was a German chemist who reported a method for synthesis of alkenes from aldehydes and ketones using compounds called phosphoniamylides in the Wittig reaction. The Wittig reaction was reported in the year 1954 by George Wittig and his co-worker, his student, scientist Ulrich. Scientist Wittig shared the Nobel Prize in chemistry with another great scientist, Herbert C. Brown, in the year 1979. We know that Herbert C. Brown is extremely famous for his research work in organoboron chemistry. The Wittig reaction or Wittig olefination is a chemical reaction of an aldehyde or a ketone with a triphenyl phosphoniamylide, often called a Wittig reagent, to give an alkene and triphenyl phosphinoxide. This particular reaction is widely used in organic synthesis for the preparation of alkenes. Wittig reactions are most commonly used to couple aldehydes and ketones to singly substituted triphenyl phosphoniamylides. In the Wittig reaction, however, two smaller carbon units are conjoined to make the alkene double bond. Thus, molecules of increasing size and complexity can be quickly assembled. In addition, there is no ambiguity regarding the site of the double bond. In contrast to elimination reactions, which often give mixtures of more substituted and less substituted structural isomers. Here comes the mechanism of Wittig reaction. When, when a primary or secondary alkyl halide is treated with triphenyl phosphine, we get a phosphonium salt via SN2 reaction. It is worthwhile to mention that triphenyl phosphine is quite stable in air. When this particular phosphonium salt is treated with a strong base, such as phenyl lithium or butyl lithium in dry ether or sodium hydride in DMSO, we do obtain a phosphorus elide. These phosphorus elides are extremely stable due to the close proximity of two opposite charges and obviously due to pi d pi back bonding. Now, the phosphorus elide, which is also known as the Wittig reagent, when it is treated with an aldehyde or a ketone, it undergoes nucleophilic addition on the carbonyl carbon. Here we obtain initially an intermediate like this, which is known as betaine intermediate. Now this particular betaine intermediate gets converted to oxophosphatane intermediate. This particular oxophosphatane intermediate when undergoes elimination, 
we obtain an alkene, and along with the alkene, we obtain triphenyl phosphinoxide. Some important features. The four member, the four member cyclic intermediate, the four member cyclic oxaphosphatane intermediate is highly straight. However, the reaction proceeds. SPO bond energy is very high. Comparatively, larger size of phosphorus leads to a strain in lesser extent. The entropy of activation, this is a very important point. The entropy of activation is negative. This proves the formation of a cyclic intermediate. The isolation of the intermediate experiment proves the formation of the cyclic intermediate. So <clears throat> people often ask that how can you prove the formation of such, such an unstable oxaphosphatane intermediate? We can give them two answers. We can, we can explain to them in this type of way that the entropy of activation of this type of reaction is a negative one. That means this indirectly proves the formation of a cyclic intermediate. Again, some isolation of the intermediate experiment proves the formation of such intermediate. Thus, we can conclude that the phosphonium elide attacks at the carbonyl carbon. Initially, we obtain some betaine intermediate. Betaine intermediate is then gets converted to oxaphosphatane intermediate. And from this particular oxaphosphatane, we can obtain an alkene like this. <clears throat> Vitic reaction from a retrosynthetic point of view. If we want to synthesize an alkene via Vitic reaction, we can follow this particular technique. What is the technique? We have to disconnect the bond. We have to disconnect the bond across C double bond C. So we have to disconnect the CC bond. If we disconnect this particular CC bond, we will obtain two fragments. This is my left-hand side fragment, and this is my right-hand side fragment. Both the fragments are having one incomplete carbon. What to do now? We are having two options. Option number one, either you can introduce double bond O here and one hydrogen and halogen there. What I have said, let me repeat again. You can introduce a double bond O here and an hydrogen and a halogen here. Then this is going to be my starting material. And if I introduce one double bond O here and one hydrogen and halogen there, then this is going to be my starting material. So we are having two options. So we are having two options. Option number one, either we can perform Wittig reaction using these two systems, or we can perform Wittig reaction using these two systems. In between, in between two such options, in between two such options, we will follow that particular option where SN2 reaction is much more favored. Let me discuss the synthesis of this particular alkene. If we want to obtain this particular alkene via Wittig reaction, I have to disconnect this particular CC bond. If I disconnect this particular CC bond, then I'll be having two incomplete carbon. Now we are having two options. Either, either we can add double bond O here and one hydrogen halogen there, or we can add double bond O here and hydrogen halogen there. So, so if your alkene is an unsymmetrical one, and if you want to synthesize that particular alkene using the Wittig methodology, you will always have two different options. And in between two different options, that particular option is going to be preferred where SN2 reaction is much more favored. So in between these two options, obviously I'll prefer this particular option as SN2 reaction is quite favored on, on an uh, one degree alkyl halide like this. The stereoselectivity in the Wittig reaction depends on the stability of elide. This is a very important concept. But due to lack of time, I'm not going into the detail of it. I'm just, I'm just mentioning you two important points. Please, please remember these two points. 
when the elide when the elide is destabilized when the elide is destabilized then the wittig reaction is going to be z selective and when the elide is stabilized then the wittig reaction is going to be e selective okay so so elides are stable why stable due to p pi d pi back bonding due to the proximity of two opposite charges but apart from such factors but apart from such factors if my elide gets stabilized due to some other factors then my wittig reaction is going to be e selective and if my elide is not at all that much stable then the wittig reaction is going to be z selective dear students this is an important reaction try to follow this reaction carefully we have formaldehyde molecule if we treat formaldehyde with methanol and dry hcl definitely we will be getting a product like this this particular product is known as methoxy methyl chloride abbreviated as mom chloride when triphenyl phosphine is added to such mom chloride following substitution reaction we will be getting such type of a phosphonium salt when this phosphonium salt is treated with a strong base like phenyl lithium or butyl lithium we will be getting such type of an elide if we add a carbonyl compound like cyclohexanone to some elide to some elide then obviously these two molecules will follow wittig reaction initially they will form some sort of betaine intermediate followed by the formation of oxaphosphatane intermediate and then elimination of ph3po ultimately the final product is going to be just like this <clears throat> dear student please acknowledge that this particular molecule is nothing but a vinyl methyl ether this particular molecule is nothing but a vinyl alkyl ether right if we hydrolyze if we hydrolyze this particular molecule under acidic medium then what actually happens this vinyl alkyl ether this vinyl alkyl ether will break down to give you a molecule like that you can you can remember it in this type of way that in this particular molecule the bonding connectivity we are having is c double bond c single bond o in this particular molecule the bonding connectivity we are having is c double bond c single bond o when some c double bond c single bond o is hydrolyzed under acidic medium it will be converted to c single bond c double bond o you know that this particular reaction takes place by the formation of some hemiacetal this particular reaction takes place by the formation of some hemiacetal i am not going into the detail but please keep it in your mind that if you are having a vinyl ether having c double bond c single bond o under hydrolysis under acidic medium the c double bond c single bond o will be converted to c single bond c double bond o what is the utility of this reaction you please follow that one of my starting material was that one of my starting material was cyclohexano but this product is just like this that means that with respect to this molecule that with respect to this molecule that with respect to this molecule in this particular compound carbonyl functionality gets shifted by one unit so if you ever want to shift the carbonyl group by one unit you can blindly follow this technique you can you can take mom chloride molecule you can add ph3p into it you will be getting some sort of phosphonium chloride you will get some elide use that elide to undergo wittig reaction with your carbonyl compound you will be getting some sort of vinyl ether alkyl vinyl ether where you will find 
a bonding connectivity like C double bond, C single bond O, that particular bonding connectivity on hydrolysis under acidic medium will give you definitely C single bond, C double bond O. That is the concept. This is one modification of Wittig reaction. This is known as horner wadsworth Immons reaction. This is a chemical reaction used in organic chemistry of stabilized phosphonate carbon ions with aldehydes or ketones to produce predominantly E alkenes. In the year 1958, scientist Horner published a modified Wittig reaction using a phosphonate stabilized carbon ion. William Wordsworth and Williams Emmons further defined the reaction. In contrast, in contrast to phosphonium elides used in the Wittig reaction, phosphonate stabilized carbon ions are more nucleophilic but less basic. Likewise, the phosphonate stabilized carbon ions can be easily alkylated. Unlike phosphonium elides, the dialkyl phosphate salt byproduct can be easily removed by aqueous extraction. I'm not going into the detail of it. This is just the schematic version. In this way, we can obtain alpha, beta, unsaturated ester, and the stereochemistry of this particular alkene is always going to be E. I have mentioned it that using Horner Wordsworth Emmons modification, using Horner Wordsworth Emmons reaction, we can produce predominantly E alkenes. This is my last slide the Peterson olefination, another modification of Wittig reaction, right? The Peterson olefination is the chemical reaction of alpha silyl carbon ions with ketones to form a beta hydroxy silane. This is the beta hydroxy silane, okay? This is the alpha beta beta hydroxy silane. This beta hydroxy silane now undergoes elimination to form alkene. One attractive feature of the Peterson olefination is that it can be used to prepare either cis or trans alkenes from the same beta hydroxy silane. I can use, I can use a single beta hydroxy silane to obtain both cis alkene as well as trans alkene in a separate manner. How? Treatment of beta hydroxy silane with acid will yield one alkene. The treatment of beta hydroxy silane with acid will yield one alkene, while the treatment of the same beta hydroxy silane with base will yield the, the alkene of opposite stereochemistry. If we add sodium hydride here, this particular OH is going to be converted to O minus. Then this particular CC bond will rotate and O minus and silicon center will come in some closer proximity. Now these two will react to give us an alkene like this. If this particular molecule is treated with an acid, then in presence of acid, this particular OH is going to be protonated. It will be converted to H2 plus, then carbon silicon bond is going to be cleaved and we will obtain an alkene of other stereochemistry. Since there are certain drawbacks of Wittig reactions, so nowadays there are many modifications of Wittig reactions, like uh, as I discussed briefly about Horner Wordsworth Timon's reaction, Peterson olefination is extremely famous, Argusov reaction is there, and many such reactions are there. Now the most important part, this is the acknowledgement part. I want to acknowledge Professor Brijesh Parisa, whom I always consider my mentor. I want to acknowledge Professor Unkush Gupta of HBCA CTIFR Mumbai. I want to acknowledge Professor D.V. Prabhu, Professor S.P. Singh, Professor Sujata Kale, Professor A. Kumbhar, Professor S.D. Samant, Professor S. Ladaje, Professor L. Ravi Shankar, thank you, madam, for enriching us for your wonderful lecture. I want to thank my, my mentor, my research guide, Professor S. Basu, Professor C. Shaha, 
and all the faculty members of Government Madhav Science PG College of Jain. <clears throat> I believe in this particular line. Please have a look at it. The subject of organic chemistry is like a flowing river. The subject of organic chemistry is like a flowing river, the beauty of which can only be admired silently from the bank, but remains impalpable. Thank you all. Now I am open for any type of doubt. Over to you, Kalpana Madam. Uh, thank you, Dr. Amrit Krishna. Uh, I want to ask students if you have any questions, please raise your hands. Three participants have raised their hands. Okay. Dr. Sarita Tiwari, she has already been unmuted. Dr. Sarita Tiwari, please ask your question. Is she there, Dr. Sarita Tiwari? Okay, Dr. Divya Nair. Uh, hello, am I audible, ma'am? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Good evening, sir. Good sir, evening. my question is, what is the solvent used in Wittig reaction and why it is used so? Okay. Okay, it's a good question. Uh, you see that I have already mentioned... <clears throat> That, uh, that during the course of Wittig reaction, we actually prefer uh, THF, tetrahydrofuran. Actually, we have to keep it in mind, uh, the solubility of both sponium amylide and the carbonyl compound. It actually depends on what type of carbonyl compound we are taking. Generally, we use tetrahydrofuran, but some other solvents can also be used. But it totally depends on the solubility of the carbonyl compound on which we are eager to perform with the reaction. Okay, uh, next we have, uh, I think Rachna Sharma was there. Please uh, see Mayank and Mukesh. If you can see yes, any reason, please uh, unmute and uh, ask them to ask their questions. Hello? Yeah. Yes. Your name? Amen. Rachna Sharma. Yeah, okay, ask your question. Uh, sir, my question is, uh, sir, what is the order of reactivity of primary, Amen. secondary, tertiary? I mean, if they react with uh, one compound which is having hydroxyl or carboxylic group together. Pardon? Please repeat. Hello? Yes, please repeat sir, your question. What would be the order of reactivity uh, among primary, secondary, or tertiary amine, if these amines react with a compound which is already having a hydroxyl or carboxylic group with uh, all together? If a molecule contains carboxylic acid. Huh. And, yes, and, if molecule uh, is containing both the groups, hydroxyl as well as a carboxylic group. If a molecule contains uh, both OH and CWH group. OH and COH and it is going to react with primary, secondary, or tertiary amine. So what will be the order of reactivity, the whether there will be, there will be any reaction or not? In what Actually, okay. Actually, primary amine will react at a faster rate. Actually, primary amine will couple with the carboxylic acid to give you an amide. Uh, but this type of reaction is not at all that much feasible with the secondary and three degree amines. But this type of question is, is, uh, is not that much related to the portions that I have discussed uh, today. Sir, actually, uh, but, you have some organic chemistry background. That's why I have okay, asked this okay, question. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so it is a very good question. If your organic molecule uh, is containing some OH and CWH group, and uh -huh. if we are adding some one degree or two degree or three degree amines, then obviously the reactivity um, of one degree amine uh, should be the highest because yes. primary amine is going to react with the carboxylic acid to form an uh, amide linkage. Next question. Okay. okay, so thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Are there any more questions, Mayank and uh, Mukesh? No, there, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Then, uh, then I would like to invite uh, Principal Sir for his concluding remarks, Doctor Arpan Bhardwaj, for his concluding remarks. Remarks, welcome you, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar, uh, Mitra sir. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. You are. Audible. 
Oh, so this was the wonderland of uh, organic chemistry. It was really wonderful in the sense that these were, uh, for a student, this may look like that the, we have studied four name reactions. But what was the wonder in this? If uh, all of you have noted, as I was listening to this from the beginning, uh, one term which came uh, in Wittig reaction, that was Ampolung. If you have noted that, all the participants, I want to share this thing with you. Ampolung, if you have noted, and at the same time in the Wittig reaction, uh, Dr. Mitra shared information that uh, Wittig was given Nobel Prize with Brown for this reaction, for some work, you know. And Ampolung is happening in this reaction. You know, you, there, there was a, in the slide it was written that what is Ampolung. So it is reversal of uh, reactivity. And the same thing happened with Green Yard, you know. Green Yard was awarded Nobel Prize almost 50 years prior to Wittig. Almost 50 years prior to Wittig, or not, maybe not, may not be 50 years, it may be 20 years or 30 years, but the same activity he also observed. And, both and 1902, of them, 1902. Pardon, sir? 1902, I guess. Uh, Vignard. Victor Grignard. Victor Grignard. Pardon? Victor Grignard. Are ah, you talking yeah. about Grignard? Yeah, yeah. He, he got in 1902. Yes. And when did Brown got the sir? 1979. Oh, just see, a gap of 77 years, and the same event is happening. The same thing happened with Vignard, and the same thing was observed by Brown, and the, both of the things led to the Nobel Prize. So this is what you know, you must understand, what is the wonder in the organic reaction? That a positively charged carbon, carbon atom becomes negatively charged, and vice versa, and that is what the wonder is happening in... Uh, organic chemistry. Actually, organic chemistry, this itself started with a wonder that an organic compound was synthesized from an inorganic source. If you remember the Hohler synthesis, you can uh, remember, you can uh, remind that the synthesis of urea was uh, done by Hohler and he started it from an, from an inorganic compound. So the organic reactions are always, uh, they are always wonderful. And the presentation was wonderful in the sense that it, it, it was a composition of every fact, every aspect of organic chemistry. Maybe that it was a conformational analysis, maybe that it was a optical isomerism, chirally chiral carbon. It was, uh, it had a geometrical isomerism when he said that it was E selective or Z selective. He was he had everything which is there in organic chemistry. The presentation had everything, confirmation, the um, uh, convention which is used in uh, organic chemistry, uh, Newman convention, it was there. Geometrical isomerism was there. Optical activity was there. Everything was there in the presentation. So it was a package of wonders which happened in, in the synthesis of organic chemistry. And... Uh, uh, I will like to thank Professor Pare, Professor Dr. Kalpana Singh and the whole chemistry department of Madhu Science College Jain that they gave this opportunity to me also to listen to this wonderful uh, talk. It was a wonderful experience to listen to these things because I'm also an organic chemist and the thing which all the young people who are here in, the, in this uh, webinar, I want to share this thing with you that all these things, they are, they, they are priceless. Even 35 years back when we were studying, we, were, we used to study Perkin reaction, we used to study Wittig reaction. So they, they did a wonder which is not replaced by anything. There may be some modification, but their utility, their, uh, their applications, for example, there was carcinogenic remedy was there in the presentation. Medicinal compound development was there in the uh, presentation. The whole revolution which happened because of Ampolang, the whole uh, industrial revolution happened because of Ampolang, uh, which was observed by Green Yard. So, all of you understand that what, uh, what the organic chemistry is. So, giving a right place, because the uh, people who are organizing this event, they are physical chemistry people, and uh, uh, giving a pro proper place to organic chemistry, uh, because if you share, if you go to the list of uh, Nobel laureates, there was a gap for 50 years. Almost there was 50, it was a gap of 50 years or 40, 
I think it was a gap of 50 years when none of the inorganic chemists uh, could get uh, Nobel Prize for 50 years from, I think it was from uh, uh, 1902 uh, or 3 to 1952 when Pauling was awarded with Nobel Prize. So the physical people were always, uh, physical chemist people were always on the top. So discussing organic chemistry with their importance, that how important they are. It was really wonderful, and uh, Mitra sir, I must thank uh, Professor Pare to invite you and to introduce you. And uh, as you uh, shared that he is mentoring you, he is mentoring so many brilliant students. He is mentoring so many uh, budding chemists here in um, Mother Science College also. So I thank you all for organizing this wonderful thing and uh, giving me also a chance to listen chemistry for three hours because sitting on this chair, it becomes a very difficult task to uh, listen to the chemistry, which is, uh, you know, for which uh, I'm supposed to work. So it was really a worth experience to be with all you people. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Moving on to the next step, I would like to invite Dr. Jeevan Singh Solanki for the official vote of thanks, for extending official vote of thanks. Dr. Solanki, who is the coordinator for pharmaceutical chemistry, please, uh, the floor is yours. Namaskar, madam. Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear me. Okay. To, to create something in the words in quite a difficult task that to without God's inspiration, elder blessing, younger's love and cooperation of friends, definitely the completion of any work depends upon the cooperation, coordination and combined efforts of several resources such as resources of knowledge, skill, labor, and <clears throat> time. The precious guidance of several pupils cannot be fulfilled by things. I speak on behalf of Department of Chemistry, Pharmaceutical Chemistry, and entire fraternity of Government Madhav Science College. First of all, I take this auspicious opportunity to express my profound sense of gratitude to architect of this lecture, Dr. Amit, Amrit Krishna Mitra, who is spared time from his busy schedule and deliver very valuable, knowledgeable and informative lecture. Thank you very much, sir. We are thankful to our principal, Dr. Arpan Bharatwas, sir, for his continuous inspiration and constructive guidance. Thank you very much, sir. I am also thankful to IPC coordinator, Dr. Kalpana Singh, madam, head of the department, Dr. Bajas Pare, sir, or all member of department of chemistry and pharmaceutical chemistry for their valuable suggestion. I am also thankful to our technical team for technical support. Last but not least, I am bound <clears throat> in expressible love and gratitude of, to all our well-wishers who are working behind this scene. Without their blessing and cooperation, this event would never take this ultimate step. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Solanki. Thank you, Dr. Amrit Mitra. Thank you, Dr. Bhargaj. And thank, thank you, uh, uh, head of the department, Dr. Brijesh Pare, for being a constant. Uh, all of you have been a constant support so that we could organize this, these type of lectures. I really appreciate all of you uh, on behalf of Jeevan has already told everything. But I would again like to thank you on behalf of Internal Quality Assurance Cell. And here we are signing off. I also thank uh, my dear participants for being there and for being listening to all these uh, things without whom it would not have been possible. I have, uh, uh, all of you can leave dear dignitaries. I have a 
information for the participants to see. Thanks uh, a lot. For the participants, we are just pasting a feedback link here on Zoom chat box, and we are uh, posting that link also on YouTube chat. Please uh, fill your feedback uh, till 7 p.m. You have to fill it up by 7 p.m. After that, we'll not be accepting your feedbacks. Administrator, please post the feedback link on both the sessions. Administrator, please post the link on both the sessions, uh, both the chat boxes. Yes, ma'am, it has been posted. Okay, thank you very much. Participants, this feedback link will be here for 10 minutes or for five to uh, seven to 10 minutes. Please fill up the feedback, uh, feedback form going on this link. Thank you very much. Please do not ask uh, for these feedback links after you leave uh, this session. 